Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ominde again, and this time I'm going to discuss the male external genitalia. So, this picture shows the reproductive tract of uh, males. So, this is the penis. It has what we call the copper spongiosum, this posterior part which has a urethra traversing through it. And then its distal portion is dilated to form a glans penis and is usually covered by prepuce, which is a skin that is usually cut during circumcision. Then this is the corpora cavernosa, corpora because there are two. This is the dorsal aspect of the penis. And this penis is flaccid. Later we shall discuss the differences between a flaccid and an erect penis. This is a scrotum, sorry for that, scrotum. It has the testis inside, and from the testis we have the epididymis that has a head, body, and tail, and then you have the vast difference that passes through the spermatic cord, through the inguinal canal, posterior to the bladder, this is the urinary bladder. It's joined by the seminal vesicle ducts, together they form ejaculatory duct that opens the prostatic urethra. This is the urethra carrying urine from the bladder. It has different parts. Prostatic urethra passes between within the prostate gland, then you have a membranous urethra, and you have here the penile urethra. So the scrotum is a cutaneous or poaching of skin of the abdomen that contains the testes. The skin of the scrotum is thin, dark, and rugous with folds. Then we have the scrotal raphe that indicates the bilateral origin of the scrotum, right from the right and left lapiscrotal swelling. Scrotum has a superficial fascia that's devoid of fat and contains the datus muscle, which helps regulate temperature. Remember, for spermatogenesis to occur, you need a temperature that is slightly lower than the normal body temperature. The superficial fascia is continuous anteriorly with the scapus fascia, which is the membranous fascia of the anterior abdominal wall. The testes within the scrotum, apart from skin, is also covered by external spermatic fascia, which is an extension of external oblique aponeurosis muscle. The cremasteric muscle and its fascia, which is a continuation of internal oblique abdominis aponeurosis, internal spermatic fascia, which is a continuation of the fascia transversalis, and tunica vaginalis, a continuation of the peritoneum, and it has a visceral and parietal part. So this is the skin with superficial fascia containing datus muscle, then colless fascia, which is the membranous, external spermatic fascia, continuation of external oblique ab uh, abdominis aponeurosis, Cremasteric muscle and fascia, which is a continuation of um, internal oblique aponeurosis, then internal spermatic fascia, fascia transversalis. Then this is the tunica vaginalis, peritoneal folds with the parietal and the visceral, and that, that suggests this covered by tunica albuginia. Cremasteric muscle there, continuation of internal oblique abdominis aponeurosis muscle. The scrotum is applied by internal pudendal artery, femoral artery that gives external pudendal branches and inferior epigastric that gives a cremasteric branch. The lymphatics of the scrotum drain mainly to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, but some go to the deep external iliac and lumbar nodes. The scrotum uh, has sensory innervation from different sources, anterior laterally from the genital branch of genital femoral nerve, anteriorly from ilioinguinal nerve, posteriorly from perineal branch of pudendal nerve, and inferiorly from perineal branch of posterior cutaneous. The testis produces spermatozoa and testosterone, suspended in the scrotum by the spermatic folds, and is usually covered by tunica uh, vaginalis, except where it is attached to the epididymis. The epididymis is corma shaped on the superior posterior aspect of the testis. It has a head, body, and tail, and the tail is continuous with the ductus deferens. So, this is the testis within the scrotum. It's covered by tunica virginia. Uh, tunica uh, Virginia, which sends in septa to divide the gland into lobules. Each lobule contains seminiferous tubules where spermatogenesis occurs. Then you have straight tubules, so the sperms will be released into straight tubules, rated testes, efferent ductules to the epididymis, which has a head, body, and tail that then joins to the ductus deferens. The testis is supplied by testicular artery from abdominal aorta at L2 vertebra level. Artery to vas deferens and cremasteric artery. It has veins that correspond to these arteries above, and testicular vein is formed from uh, 
um, the pampini complexes of pain. The testis lymphatics drain mainly into the lumbar nodes, but some go into the inguinal and iliac nodes. That's the testicular artery being given off from abdominal aorta. All right. And then these are the pampini complexes of veins that will join to form the testicular vein. And the left testicular vein drains into the left uh, renal vein before it goes to the inferior vena cava. But the right testicular veins drain directly into the inferior vena cava. Again, tunica albuginea, septa divides gland into lobules. Each lobule contains a miniferous tubule that open into straight tubules. Straight tubules will open into rotted testes. Rated testes into efferent ductus, into epididymis, the head, to the body, to the tail that continues as the ductus deferens. Again, miniferous tubules, straight tubules, rated testes, efferent ductus, and then the epididymis. And remember, the outer coverings from skin to superficial fascia that has datus, then colless fascia, which is the membranous part, then external spermatic fascia from external oblique, cremasteric muscle from internal oblique aponeurosis. Then, um, internal spermatic fascia from fascia transversalis before you get to tunica vaginalis, which is from peritoneum. The penis is a male organ of copulation. It contains the urethra, which serves as an outlet for urine and semen, and superficial uh, to the penis is the tunica albuginea and, and deep fascia. The skin of the penis is thin, dark, and loose, and there's usually a prepuce that covers the glands penis. It's this prepuce that's usually cut during circumcision. The penis has three cylindrical bodies of erectile tissue. We have the corpus spongiosum on the ventral surface that contains the urethra and the distal portion of the corpus spongiosum dilates to form the glans penis which has a urethral opening. And then on the dorsum aspect we have the corpus cavernosum which are two bodies of erectile tissue on the dorsal aspect and these are usually enclosed by white fibrous tissue, the tunica albuginea. So these are the corpora cavernosum and this is the corpus spongiosum with the urethra. Corpora cavernosum, each of them has an artery. Corpus spongiosum has the urethra, the center, with uh, barbo cavernous arteries. So these are erector tissues. Then you can see the dorsal arteries there and the deep dorsal vein. So the penis has two surfaces, a dorsal and a ventral surface. So the, when a, the penis is erect, the dorsal surface faces posterior superiorly, and when the penis is flaccid, the dorsal surface faces anteriorly. It's this dorsal surface is continuous with anterior abdominal wall, while the ventral surface is continuous with the sputum. So look at this. This is an erect penis. This is a flaccid penis. The dorsal surface is continuous with anterior abdominal wall. It faces anteriorly when the penis is flaccid, and posterior superiorly when the penis is erect. While the ventral surface is continuous with the sputum, and uh, um, continuous with the sputum on the lower aspect. Then the Penis has a root that usually uh, anchors the penis and it consists of two crura and a bulb with associated muscles. The bulb is located between the crura and is penetrated by the urethra. So again, this is the scrotum, this is the anal canal, this is the uh, corpus uh, spongiosum, this, are the, the, this is the corpus spongiosum, that's the glans penis, that's the corona urethral opening, and the raphi of the penis. So the root of the penis we've said is made up of two pura and a bulb at the center with a urethral opening. Again, appreciate the corpus spongiosum and the corpora cavernosum that's the glands with its corona. So the body of the penis is usually the free part of the penis with corpus spongiosum and two corpora cavernosum. And the corpus spongiosum dilates distally to form the glands penis and at its neck you have the corona of the gland. The penis is supported by fundiform ligament and suspensory ligament. Fundiform ligament arises from inferior part of linear alba. It splits into two parts and passes on each side of the penis from linear alba, while suspensory ligament is from anterior surface of pubic symphysis. So fundiform ligament from libia, uh, linear alba, suspensory ligament from the pubic symphysis. So this is the suspensory ligament and this is the fundiform ligament. This is linear alba, fundiform ligament, and the suspensory ligament from the pubic symphysis. Penis is supplied by dorsal and deep arteries from internal pedendal vessels and autonomic nerves and dorsal nerve of penis and pedendal nerve. Corpora cavernosa there, corpus spongiosum with the urethra, right? Then the two crura and a bulb with the urethral opening, and you can appreciate mucosal uh, openings within the urethra.
So you can have accumulation of clear fluid in the scrotum is called a hydrocell. It can be congenital or caused by trauma or filial warmth. Trauma can also cause accumulation of blood within the scrotum and that's called hematocell. Varicocell. Varicocell is basically a long, tortuous, dilated veins. And in this case, we're talking about piniform veins of the testes, mainly occurring on the left than in the right, and are caused by defective valves of the testicular vein. So this is a hydrocell, clear fluid collection of the scrotum. Then we have what you call testicular torsions, when um, the testis twists, the, the uh, testis, just the twisting of the testis, and this occurs at the level where you have the blood vessels. So when they no, are knotted towards each other, you're depleting blood supply to the testes, and that can lead to necrosis. So surgery has to be done immediately. It's a very painful condition. So the testis is within the scrotum. Although the scrotum drains to the superficial one well node, the testis drains into the lumbar lymph node. So in cases of cancer, testicular cancer, you have enlargement of lumbar nodes. If it's the skin of the scrotum that is being involved, the superficial one well nodes will enlarge. Vasectomy is a contraceptive procedure where a vas difference is ligated at the spermatic cord and that prevents pumps from entering into the urethra. The spermatic cord has three uh, coverings, the internal spermatic fascia from transversalis, primasteric, transversalis fascia, primasteric muscle and fascia from internal oblique and external spermatic fascia from external oblique abdominis muscle. So that's the, this here is the spermatic cord carries structures to and from uh, from the abdomen to the testes from the testes to the abdomen so it contains the three coverings then it has three nerves autonomic nerves inguinal nerve and genital femoral nerve it has three arteries the articular artery artery to ductus deferens cremasteric artery it has complete complexes of the ductus deferens lymphatic vessels and remnants of the processes vaginalis so this is the spermatic code it has three coverings, external spermatic fascia from external oblique, cremasteric muscle from internal oblique abdominis, internal spermatic fascia from fascia transversalis. It has three arteries, we've said testicular artery, artery to vas deferens, and cremasteric artery. Then it has three nerves, ilioinguinal nerve, genitofemoral nerve, and autonomic nerves. And then it has three other structures, pampini complexes of veins, and vas deferens with lymphatics and remnants of genica vagina. Processes vaginalis. Ilioinguinal nerve generally supplies skin over the scrotum in the medial thigh, while genital femoral nerve has a genital branch and a femoral branch. Femoral branch supplies medial portion of thigh, while genital branch supplies the cremasteric muscle. So we have what you call cremasteric reflex, where you stroke the upper medial aspect of the thigh in male. Sensation will be carried by femoral branch of genital femoral, and that communication will occur at the level of the spinal cord and cause the genital branch of genital femoral to cause contraction of the cremasteric muscle, hence pulling up the testes. This is usually easy to demonstrate in children, but with age, this reflex gets weaker. So remember, the sensory aspect is by femoral branch of genital femoral, while the motor aspect is by genital branch of genital femoral, causing contraction of cremasteric muscle. Thank you very much.